Now we're just getting random numbers generated at an extremely fast speed. Random numbers are increasingly important in this ever digital world. Now you may have used random numbers if you roll a dice. You get a random number for your game. But you also use random numbers when you go on the computer and you log into your Google account and it sends you that text message on your phone that's a random digit to enter in. Or it can also be used when you're just logging into the website and unbeknownst to you, inside the code behind the website, there's random numbers that are involved in the security of the website. Random numbers are also important in cryptography and secure communications. Now, random numbers aren't always as random as they seem. Now, the Arduino has a random number fun generator function on it. And it may seem like it's generating random numbers, but in actuality, it's not. It's something called a pseudo-random number generator. Now, pseudo-random number generators are number generators that generate random numbers based on an algorithm. So while they seem like they're random numbers, they aren't as random, and therefore they aren't as useful for security. Because if you have a computer, you can kind of crack how these random numbers were made and eventually figure out what these random numbers are. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a random number generator that is almost the most random numbers you can get. And we're going to be using radiation. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. So one of the most random processes that occurs is something called radioactive decay. And let's say you have an atom of something radioactive like uranium. What's going to happen is as this atom grows older, it's going to decay. And as it decays, it's going to shoot off these little particles called alpha or beta particles. Now, the release of these particles due to radioactive decay is super random. Nothing can predict when one of these particles is going to fly out according to the decay. You can figure out an approximate time span that these, these particles are going to fly out, such as when you put the radioactive source closer to a Geiger counter, or you have a more radioactive source, it's going to spew out more of these particles. These radioactive particles are going to be as random as you can get. And so this makes it useful for a random number generator. But you may ask, how are we going to get this into a random number generator? Well, the answer is with a Geiger counter and an Arduino and a laptop. So I have this power supply right here. This is a high voltage capacitor bank. This is going to be running a Geiger tube. Now a Geiger tube basically detects when these particles are shot off a decaying radioactive atom. And it does that by triggering a small pulse of electric current that flows through this Geiger tube, which is amplified by this little circuit board right here, and the pulse is outputted on one of these pins. Now that pulse, or the length in between certain pulses, can be fed into an Arduino to actually generate some random numbers. Now I think it's high time we write the code that'll go on this Arduino that'll help us generate those random numbers. Now I could use the random number generator on the Arduino, the pseudo random number generator, which you can actually trigger by using a random number as the seed to that random number generator, which shows where it will start in its sequence of random numbers, but I think it would be a lot cooler to design my own random number generator through code. So let's go over and do that. I'm just typing random numbers right here. I've already got the code written, so I just need to look like I'm doing something in this video. <laughs> I just wrote this code. Uh, I had a video of me writing this code, so I was going to make a time lapse, but uh, I accidentally had OBS Studio recording in FLV file format, and I don't know how to convert that to MP4, so I switched it around, and here's the code. So what we have is we have an interrupt pin, we have count equals zero, and previous count. We just have a few variables up here. The interrupt pin has to be two because that's the only pin, well, that and three on the Arduino Uno that accept interrupts. And what happens when an interrupt is happens is there's a positive pulse on one of the pins of the chip, and that positive pulse on that one pin is going to interrupt whatever's happening in the code to run a certain function. So what we have here is we have the void setup. We're just setting two to an input we're attaching an interrupt to interrupt pin and for this certain function called a random number and that's when it's rising when it's rising that means when the curve goes up for the pulse that's when it's going to trigger the function to run 
and we have serial begin so we can have a serial print. Now what happens is in the void loop, we're going to have it just counting. Now how this count works is there's a for loop that goes between minimum and maximum. And minimum and maximum are the two numbers that you want to find your random number in between. Now what's going to happen is the for loop is going to run through this many times. As you can see, there's a delay of five milliseconds in between. So it's going to run through your whole range of numbers very, very quickly. It's kind of going to be like a, a wheel spinning around in circles. Now what happens is every time the Geiger counter clicks, there's going to be an interrupt. And that interrupt is going to add the count one plus. Now what's going to happen is this function inside the for loop is going to be looking to see if count is greater than previous count. Now, count and previous count are the same, so this function is not going to do anything. And it's going to keep running. Now, as soon as the Geiger click happens, it, the interrupt's going to trigger, it's going to run this, it's going to add 1 plus to the count. Now, as soon as 1 plus is added to the count, this if statement will trigger, and it will print i, which is what the for loop is on at that exact moment when the Geiger click happened. And then it will break the for loop, which means it will basically exit the for loop and then restart it again at the first number. That means that this code is basically like a wheel that's spinning around in circles and it has a bunch of different numbers on it. And then as soon as the Geiger click happens randomly, it'll stop whatever number it's on, which is pretty cool. Now all that's left to do is connect everything together. I built most of these devices a while ago. I built the Geiger counter in a few previous videos as well as the capacitor bank. But the Arduino is already pre-built, obviously. I'm just connecting that up to my computer so I can upload the code. Oh, I have this set to 80 tiny. Okay. All right, so I got everything hooked up. So let's start up the Geiger counter. I'm basically charging up the capacitor bank right now. But I have the Arduino all hooked up, and I have my serial monitor on the computer already. So hopefully when this thing starts clicking, and we can hear that on the speaker, we should be able to start hearing some numbers go up on that serial monitor hopefully all right check it out the random number generator is working you can see that that is the output on the com port and i'll put this microphone on top of the speaker so you can hear when the sounds are being produced wow Love a good random number generator. All right, let's try putting a new range of random numbers inside there. Let's say from zero to 1,000. And let's speed up the time in which it counts down to one millisecond. This should give us a little bit more randomness. We'll upload that to the Arduino. And then look at the serial monitor. Should be pretty cool. Whoa, look at that. It got two, two 18s in the same one. That's crazy. Well, I'm pretty impressed with this build. I think it works very well. We have the Geiger counter, which has fallen below the amount of voltage you need to operate properly. And we have the Geiger counter working perfectly. We've got all our numbers being generated randomly. This whole thing looks pretty cool. I think it was a success. All right, so as you can see, the numbers that are now coming out of this machine are looking increasingly random. Now the reason why is because I updated the code to increase the entropy of the random numbers that were produced. Let's see how I did this. So as you can see in the void random number, under the count I also added two other functions. One is t between, and that's a variable, that's millis, which is the time since the Arduino has been running, minus previous time, divided by 100, and we set previous time to millis. So basically t between is the time in between the last click and the present click, and it's also divided by 100 to make it smaller. I then added this number in as the delay inside the void loop. So that way the delay, when it's counting all these numbers, is a random number instead of that one, which increases the entropy, and that's why we're getting pretty random numbers that look something like this. Uh, that's not good. Now they're all ones. Why is that happening? Oh, you know why? It's because, oh, I'm dumb. Because I set this to an int, it should be a long. It overflowed. Watch, I bet if I change this to long, it'll work again. See what happens is uh, 
I overflowed my variable because ints are only a certain amount long, so they save space. But I think I made it a little bit too long, which messed things up. So now it should fix everything. Now we're just getting random numbers generated at an extremely fast speed. It even works with random numbers in between 0 and 20. As you can see, if I move the americium, so it clicks less, it still gives pretty random numbers. But it works best when it's getting constantly clicked. Alright, so I just made something that will generate a random string of letters and numbers. Now right now it just does lowercase letters and normal numbers, no special characters. But this could be really interesting for creating a random password. Like let's say I just let it run for a little bit and it created this long random password. I could copy this password and it would be an extremely secure password because it's generated almost completely randomly and it's a bunch of random digits and numbers. So let me show you a little bit about what I did in the code to generate this. So as you can see what I've done is right here when it's supposed to serial print I, what I have is I have a string and the string is a letter and that letter goes to a function called convert of I. And so let's go to the function called convert. So we have string convert because it's a string function, it returns a string value, and then it accepts an int value as the input, so that's the input that we have, and that's going to be a value between 1 and 36. Now what's going to happen is we have a case statement here, and we also have this. Well let me explain the bottom of this case statement, where we have an if counter is greater than 35, counter equals 1, and else counter uh, goes plus plus. So let's take a look at this switch statement. So in is counter plus input. So whatever the counter is at, which will increment one every time it needs to write a letter, it'll increment that by one. And we have the input, and the input is going to be counter plus that. And so the number is going to be an offset of however many times it's been called. And once it increases 36 counter plus input it's counter minus input which basically means however many times this function has been called it'll offset the number so let's say this function has been called zero times and we get an input of one and the case statement will return a for one but let's say this function has been called twice and we get an input of one well the case statement that's going to be called is b and so even if we got if we pulsed it with a constant input of the same input would be getting a b c d e f g so what we're getting at here is kind of like an enigma machine where we have a bunch of different numbers that are being called and they're constantly rotating every time they're called like how an enigma machine rotates so first of all we have the random number from the actual counter and then we have the random uh, string being generated from that random number and it's going through an enigma machine kind of like this where it'll rotate the numbers every time. So this code can literally generate an extremely super secure password just by using radiation. So there you go, that is how to generate an extremely random, extremely secure password. You can let this device run forever, however long you want and it will keep generating random digits for your password. So there you go. I hope you learned something pretty cool about cryptography and how to use some radioactive material to generate, first of all, random integers for whatever you want, just a string of random integers, or you can even generate a random password that uses a compilation of so many random characters. You could literally make the most secure password you wanted and have it be however long you wanted because the numbers that it generates are so random, no program can guess it. Hope you liked this video about randomness. Thanks for watching.